The food system is not really sustainable at the moment. We need to be thinking about ways in which we can make the production of food more climate friendly, if you like. Foods production that does not use large amounts of greenhouse gases. Food that production that is more sustainable, so it doesn't involve significant amounts of waste. And I think sustainability metrics is one way of actually having what you might call a level playing field, so that there can be arguably some degree of regulation or indeed some competition based on the way that production systems are more or less sustainable. We're trying to build a model of global agricultural productivity simply because no one else has done it. There's an incredibly small handful of scientists who've actually devoted themselves to looking at, uh, at agriculture at a global scale and project where it might be going over the next few decades. There's this thing missing, which is that we don't really understand what it is that we're supposed to measure and how ecosystems work. We don't really have definitions of ecosystem health and ecosystem services because we don't have a model. We take lots of data, but we don't really know how to use that data and so on. So you get the issue that there's a kind of missing conceptual sort of core here. How do we manage all the indicators? You know, we have everything around it. It comes from production costs, purely economic ones, farm profits, variable costs. We understand those but also macroeconomic terms, and then it gets even more difficult when you come into social aspects and when you come into environmental aspects. And it's not only about identifying the indicators, but finding data resources and also making it measurable. So what are we really measuring? What are we assessing? We are assessing the input of the whole value chain. So we made a decision to work with indicators standing for the biodiversity level. We have 69 indicators to describe holistically agriculture? Well, in the case of Borneo, define the natural capital values, that's what we're doing. I, I think this is, an, uh, this is not a, that different from the work that both uh, Microsoft and BASF, when I said what we're doing is doing the planning, mine is a more political presentation, actually, than, than theirs, but, but and although I, I noticed in the, in the BASF presentation the work that you're going to be doing in Asia, it would very much fit into this kind of modeling and, and assessment. It would be very complementary, actually. And then you can ask yourself, what kind of political guidelines do you want to have so that this let's say, particular value chain or this particular crop grown in, in, in a country or in a region can be done more sustainable? And I think this is where the models can really help because they get, you can test out various scenarios and seeing the impact not on the, on the economy, not only on the environment, but also on the society part. We use egg balance now to make very concrete decisions. For example, we change the fertilizer source. We're looking into a fertilizer with a low, slow release effect, saying what kind of impact does it have on yield? We know this from field, actual field data. And we, we see what kind of impact does it have on NOx emissions, for example. So you see already, with a clear decision, changing the fertilizer, understanding you know, the, the, the ecological footprint, understanding the carbon footprint, understanding the emission footprint, and the economics behind, you know, we can already drive a concrete decision. Where the modeling comes in is to say, you know, we can just say everything is connected to everything else, but that leaves us in a position where we don't know what to do because we feel like we pull a policy lever and anything could happen. And I think what I would hope is that if we can do the modeling well enough, we can at least estimate the strengths of, strength of these, these you know, s sort of secondary and tertiary effects and the, and the strength of the feedback so that at least the pol policy makers have the, the information or they have a decent prediction about if I pull this policy lever, what the effect will be. And the decision whether to pull it or not very much rests with the policy maker. That's their job. Sustaining the lifestyles that we have now may not be possible um, and if so, will certainly require major technological advan uh, advances. I think that what we need to do is, is to try to identify what we can do and actually you know, try to be optimistic and actually enjoy solving some of these problems. I think we can create something that will help policymakers, decision makers to, to move towards sustainability in a in very uh, much more measured way, much more, much more deliberate uh, for policy outcomes. What I would say is that uh, one sustainability model that would leave out other values, other values that are important to people, the values that, uh, that, 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 that make us humans, emotional values, those should never be left out completely. The model would be helpful for making better policy, but it will never be complete if it loses out the human values.
This is really important. There's been three or four lost decades in which agricultural research has not really been taken forward. And it takes almost a decade for results in a lab to actually be of use to farmers or producers. And it should be research into productivity, but also in terms of the environmental impacts of research, because there are issues to do with biodiversity, to do with ecosystem services, to the way we use water, which are extremely important and must be taken, uh, taken into account in any policy.